So a part of this life, because you're in, we're in this dimension, even though you come to full awakening, but your body and your mind is going to be in this dimension till your duration ends and the body goes. But as long as you're here, the more you become sensitive, the more you hear the power and the voice of your intuition. And you follow the guidance of your powerful intuition. It will tell you where to go, what to do, where to dodge the bullet, what area to avoid, what is it you have to do, follow your heart, stand on your own two feet and do what is feels absolutely right and necessarily for you to do. And how to be a chameleon and be flexible. Sometimes you just have to paint your face and look like everybody else or change and dress like everyone else and do what everybody else does in order not to be identified and picked on. So flexibility is very important and being sensitive. So the collective, the fear of the collective, as you awaken, the more you get illuminated, the all you dive in yourself, the more you're waking up, the more you realize there is no other. Others don't exist. Others are yourself. It's yourself. And as you arrive to a higher peaks of consciousness, you realize that there is only one and the rest are manifestations. They're appearances of that one. So the fear of the collective is really your own fear being magnified. And there also, it's not a bad thing because, because it gets magnified, then it just teaches you two things. One is that your level of sensitivity has arisen. Second is that more reason to stay in your center and be the observer of the fear rather than identifying with it. You simply follow the practice. You're simply aware that fear is here and fear is visiting you. It may magnify, there may be more fear or less fear. It doesn't matter. If it's more, then you get to do your homework more precisely. But it doesn't matter how much fear there is and how many people are afraid. If you stay in your center and you're simply aware and observing fear, none of it has anything to do with you because you become like a Teflon, a brand new Teflon pan that nothing can stick to it. You know when you buy a brand new, good, expensive Teflon pan and no matter what you fry on it, what you're cooking on it, as soon as your food is finished, you have the pan, there's nothing sticking to it. It's so easy to wash it. But when your Teflon pan is old, it's scratched, all kinds of stuff stick to it. And it's just like us. Practice being the observer of your thoughts, the observer of your emotions, do your daily practice, stay detached to them, stay detached to the world, don't buy the world as real and don't buy your emotions as real and then you see that nothing can touch you, nothing has any effects on you, your, your peace remains undisturbed. And the most beautiful 
example of that in the modern era is Ramana Maharishi. Ramana Maharishi is my grandfather. He's my spiritual grandfather. He became awakened at age 16. In late 19th century, it was like 1896 or something. He moved to Arunachala in southern India in Tamil Nadu and he lived under the Arunachala mountain and then they created an ashram for him all of his life and that was during the first world war second world war and during the turmoil of the partition of India from the British rule he's the embodiment of silence I have never encountered anybody that represents silence and stillness the way Ramana Maharishi does, which Papaji, my master, teacher, is a disciple as of Papaji. So, he was not touched by what was happening in India. People will come and tell him, oh, Japanese may attack India to kick British out. And he was like, still, people will come and tell him, Ramana, oh, great master, you know, this movement happening, the entire India was so excited that they're going to revolt against the Brits. And people would come to him with panic, worry, anxiety, encouragement, feeling passionate about the movement, and Ramana Maharishi was still. Oh, Ramana, they just, this just happened. They're just, the British soldiers are killing everybody on the streets. And Ramana Maharishi was just like, like a rock, completely detached, completely unaffected, not because he was insensitive, because he was very still. And he gave no importance to the world because he could clearly see it's all images. Same as what I'm trying to share with you, that your thoughts and your emotions are nothing but an image passing through you And they have nothing to do with you, no matter what is happening. You will one day understand this from this place. And it will be your every moment reality. What Frederick Nietzsche said about the birth of Superman, the super consciousness, like what Nietzsche says about Zarathustra, the master who comes from the mountains and comes in his book says that God is dead and now it's time for Superman to rise. So, and that's what's happening right now with us of raising, we're raising our vibrations as we're doing this, you can feel it in past seven, eight days. You've been feeling it for the past few months that, or year or two we've been together. But the more you just focus on it, the more you dive into the teaching together as a collective, individually and collective, a number of things happen. We have become a family right now. 